All right, um, what's up guys? This is going to be lecture 15. We're gonna be going over some stuff for documenting on this. So we're gonna be going over elevation markers, section cut markers, um, door tags, uh, window tags, and uh, room markers. So anyway, here on the screen, I have a small little structure I built, just like a small 20 by 20, bleh. Um, what it is is important. What I'm going to do is just kind of go through this and show you a couple features that you have in Revit. So, um, first off, um, you're going to want to go over to the Annotate tab here, and you're going to have a couple options. Um, one of them is Tag by Category. So, and this is one of those things you want to. Um, <laughs> we're getting to tags, by the way, first. So, one of the things you want to do first, or do last in your project, so you don't have to keep going back and doing it. Um, is actually tagging things and so what I usually do is I wait until everything else is done and then I'll go tag by category um, and uh, let me see here it's super frustrating to do the other way around so usually anyway so usually I just do tag by category once I'm done with the project so I've got all my door tags and window tags do all at the same time so um, if you do tag by category and then uh, you can do them individually. So I can go, okay, this is the window. I can click on this and you're gonna get a reference number there. Um, we'll get into where those are located later. Don't worry about that for now. Um, but basically you just click on the thing that you wanna tag and you can see that uh, Revit does have different tag styles for different uh, purposes. So in the case of the door tags right here, um, it does have um, basically one this kind of bordered oval thing and then you have the hexagon for the windows you can change that um, if you want to um, I'm not going to go over it in this lecture we'll probably save that for a kind of end of the semester thing anyway so that's how you would place down those door and window tags again um, by going to annotate tag by category and then clicking on the individual options now the other option you have is to click on the tag all option right here and so this gives you a list of all the possible things that you could tag um, and it's going to tag all of them so in this case what i want to do is i want to do door tags and window tags and hit apply and oh i missed something there um let's go back there so door tags window tags and then check leader um, and that'll add the leader on there so that it'll actually stay away from the building. So, um, and you might not want the leader too. It's just kind of, I don't know, in this case I want it. So, um, anyway, it's a little bit easier to go through that menu. Um, in this example, because I only have two doors and two windows, it's very quick to just go click, 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 click. Um, but if, for example, on your final project, you have 83 windows and 25 doors, um, it's going to be a lot easier to go through and go through this menu and fill that out. Okay, so there's that. Um, next, I want to cover elevations. And so this far in the semester, um, we've kind of not been talking about these out here. Um, one second. All right. So, um, so we haven't been talking about these exterior um, elevation markers that are used by the building elevations. It's kind of been a thing like, eh, just don't talk about it. Um, what these are is just a Revit elevation marker and it's got two spots for you to click. So I can click here and it's gonna show this line right here. Um, in this case, it's gonna indicate that this is where this position or this camera is and it's gonna be, and the arrow indicates that it's facing that way. Um, and then this box right here indicates that this is where it spawned off of. Um, so when I go back to my little building right here, what I can do is I can go to um, view and then there's an option for elevation right here under create. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on that and I'm going to move this into the center of my building right here and I'm going to click there and then hit escape to clear out the tool. Now it's going to have one, one of these elevations on by default but I can click on the center box here. So notice I'm clicking on that one right there and I can turn on these other options. And as I do that, you can see that right here, uh, it's adding new elevations. So this is elevation one and then we've got A, B, C, and D. 
Um, another thing I can do, and I mentioned this in a previous lecture, um, is you can actually rename this. So instead I'm going to call this Elevation Main Room North, and we'll see if it, I, I think it just extends it to by the letter, but we'll see. No, it doesn't. It's not going to be nice. Okay. So it's going to be 1A, 1B, 1C, and 1D. Okay. So as I add those, it generates new elevations. And now I can actually, um, I can click on one of these and then right click and go to elevation view. And it's going to actually show me this interior. So just so you guys understand what this space is, it's this weird column building that I made kind of funny. Let me actually take this down. So top up a little too. Okay. So it's just a small room right here. Um, you can see that there's nothing on the wall. So let me actually go to an elevation where we can see something. Um, so go to elevation view and ooh, I put those too high. That's why we check. Um, so height. Ooh, wrong button. So height two foot. All right. So, um, that's how you generate an elevation view. And this is one of those things I kind of talked to you guys about at the start of the semester is, was what's Revit good at? Well, Revit's really good at updating things for the later parts of your documentation, and it makes that part super quick. So if um, this wasn't just this one wall, this was um, a series of walls that were built along the building, and instead I went and um, adjusted, say, this wall back a couple feet. When I switch back to this, it's already updated. Um, and if I undo that, you can see that that wall changes right there. That's one of the strengths of Revit is all these things that are automatically views built into other things will automatically be updated when you change something. So it's very powerful for that to go in and be able to just for you to go in and be able to just make a change and then unlike AutoCAD where we'd then spend an hour going and double checking all of our elevation drawings, it's done. It, that's, that's the whole process right there is you make your change and your drawings update. You still should go back and check your documentation to make sure that, for example, if I move that wall too far, it didn't now overlap into another drawing, uh, but that's just kind of general, you know, double checking quality insurance stuff. So. Um, where was I? Okay, so we've got our windows, we've got our doors. Um, we threw down this marker right here for the elevations, and then we have the elevations here in our uh, project browser. Next, we have section cuts. Uh, section cuts are pretty easy to place. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on the button right here. I'm going to click once, and you can see that it's showing the direction of it right there, and then I can just click on the other end. Now, um, if I want this to go the other way, it's not going to let me. I have to use this little, uh, oh no, that's not the one. Am I getting it backwards? Oh, here it is. Yeah. It was hidden by that little bit of wall. So there should be one of these little arrows that we're already pretty familiar with um, in order to switch the direction of the section cut if you're not happy with what it came in as. And then, of course, um, you can always, again, right-click on it and go to View for the section cut view. Um, showing again the section cut of this particular building I threw together in 30 seconds. Um, similarly, there's an option down here in the project browser showing section one, and I can double click it and go to the same drawing. All right, um, so elevations, section cuts. We're going to be doing those in our next project, um, not in too crazy of, of a depth, just fairly simple. I will have you guys, um, well, I don't want to say it now. But um, we will be going over this process. Um, I'm still trying to figure out kind of how we're adapting this semester. Um, so elevations, section cuts. One other thing we will be going over later in the semester is callouts, and they're in this same menu up here, so I might as well show you while I'm here. Um, so if you click on the callout, and then from this elevation, if I wanted to do a wall section detail, um, you'd be able to place one of those there. And then uh, that's going to come down again in the section here. And if I go to view, um, this would be something that we would then um, crank up the detail on. And then we could go through and indicate what our materials are. That's another lecture. But just keep in mind that that call out option um, is right there. All right, so 
Um, what else did I want to show you guys? Oh, um, right. So, if I click on this elevation marker, this is something that you guys will probably run into as an issue later on. Um, if I click on this marker, you can see that it's got this these two side boundaries here. So this dot and this dot indicate those are the left and right um, borders of this elevation marker. And then if I move this wall out, it should adjust automatically. Yeah, okay. So the other issue that we've run into in the past is someone says, okay, I want to do this elevation, but I don't want to have it like go... Th um, and usually, usually this is an issue where we have um, a lot of projects with open floor plans. So you have a kitchen that opens up into a dining room, which opens up into a living room, and it's all kind of the same space. And so we get a lot of those issues. So let me actually get rid of this. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so let me drag this way out here. And one of the issues we run into is this right here. So you can see that right now if I was to go to this elevation view um, let me actually put something on that wall um, okay so we got a window over there and now you can see that now it's just this big empty space all right Revit doesn't indicate that okay this there's nothing there and it's doing that because that bar for this isn't going all the way out here so if I click on this little arrow tool and I drag this a little bit further out, uh, not that one, you can see that that window um, is now showing up in this elevation. So if you're having trouble, you're, you're sitting there going, well, that's weird, something in my elevation isn't showing up, chances are it's because the extent of this drawing, it's this little, and it's labeled the far clip offset down here in the extents. Um, but chances are this isn't drawn out far enough, so you'll need to drag that out um, far enough so that it goes to the point it needs to um, in order to show the wall detail that you're looking for there. Um, and then for the sake of clarity, I am just going to delete this. Um, I have... Yes, go away. Alright, I have one other thing I want to show you guys for this. So, um, let's see. We want to go to... Um, no, we want to annotate. Okay. No, actually, we are. Okay. So, um, at some point, I will have you guys start including room tags. And so, um, up here, there's the room uh, marker. And so, if I click on this, what it does is it puts this big space right here. Um, again, one of the issues, and this is one of those issues that we run into a lot with. Um, the open floor plan where you'll have again the kitchen the dining room and the living room kind of all one big open space um, is you'll go okay here's my kitchen here's my living room and now you get an error let me tab out you can see multiple rooms are in the same enclosed region um, and what that's just saying is like you can't have two rooms in the same room so Revit has a tool for that and um, so what you have right here next to the room at one is the room separator and what this allows you to do is just draw little lines on your floor plan that act as kind of imaginary walls. So when you do go in to place these tab or these room labels, um, you can now go here's room one, here's room two, and here's room three. Okay. So the room separator there is to allow you to do those things without running into issues. And I think yeah, if you do that, it doesn't like it. So you do have to leave them there. Now, one of the other things that we talked about was um, the visibility graphics. We kind of went over this in a previous lecture. Um, there should be an option to turn those off. Uh, there might not be. I think I've just hidden them in the past. Um, so usually just... Oh. Do I got them? and then hide in view elements and that way they don't clutter up your drawing but if you hover over the room tag you can still see here's that def defined space um, for that all right so um, that's what we'll be working on this week um, give this a shot make sure you understand it and then I will be giving you guys um, I'm gonna start working on a bit um, but you'll have a much larger space and your milestone for this week will be to um, label all the doors, windows, and the rooms in a project um, that I'll be assigning to you guys. 
So make sure you know this, uh, get it ready for Tuesday, and then on Thursday I'll give you your milestone. Um, I will see you then.